That's how we develop our strategy as a church for reaching our neighbors and the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has called you to live a different life than what the world teaches you how to live. I wonder what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word holiness. Maybe it's a song, maybe it's an old sermon that you heard, maybe it's a particular verse in the Bible, maybe it's a lifestyle that you're seeking to live, but what comes to your mind when you hear the word holiness? I uh, recently came across a list of things people associate with holiness, and here are some of those things. Uh, Thinness, hollow-eyed gauntness, beards, sandals, long robes, uh, no sex, no jokes, Frequent cold baths, that's weird, Uh, fasting, hours of prayer, wild rocky deserts, getting up at 4 a.m., nothing wrong with that one, Uh, clean fingernails, stained glass, self-humiliation. These are all things that some people said in a survey when they hear the word holiness. Now, if any of that is running through your mind when you hear the word holy or holy, holiness, then you won't think holiness is even remotely attractive. My aim for this message this morning is to preach an exposition of 1 Peter 1, 13 through 25, and to teach you how to live a holier life before God. Inversely, how to live a less carnal life before Satan. I want you to live a holy life. Don't you want to be more holy in your life? Sure. I would hope so. The root meaning of the word holy is simply to cut, to sever, or to separate. If I were to cut my thumb off while I was chopping carrots at lunch today, God forbid that happen, uh, then I could hold up my thumb and say it's holy. You might say, why? What I mean is that it's set apart from the body. It's disconnected from the body. It's a thing to itself, and it isn't bound with anything else. When the Bible says that God is holy, what it's referencing is that God stands alone. He's separate from everything else. Amen? means that God's not bound up with everything else. It means that the God of the Bible is not some product of Judeo-Christian culture. He's the creator. He's not to be confused with the creation. He is separate. He is apart. God is distinct. He is holy. Look again at verses 15 and 16. As he who called you is holy... You also be holy in all your conduct, since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. God has called you to live a different life than what the world teaches you how to live. Here's a way that I say this. If you are looking at students in here today, if you're looking at your classmates as to how you are to conduct yourselves, you're looking at the wrong place. Adults in here today, maybe you're looking at a coworker and you're thinking, the way they just live their life seems pretty cool. I want to live my life that way. You don't build your life based upon somebody else. You build your life based upon what God says is the way you're supposed to live your life. Now, that's when sometimes we can get into a little bit of trouble because you say, well, I want to live just like this Christian person another 21st century person. And it reminds me of a story. I can't remember if I've told you this story, but I read about it in a, in a book once from a Hawaiian pastor. And he was building a fence. When he was building his fence, his father told him that he had to always go back to the first fence post in order to make sure that everything was measured accurately. But it was a lot easier just to go to the fence post right next door so we didn't have to walk all the way across the yard. Well, eventually they got finished with building the fence and it was all kinds of wobbly and uneven. Why? Because they weren't measuring it up against the first fence post. Too many of us today 
are living our lives comparing ourselves to another 21st century person instead of going back to the first century and comparing ourselves to Jesus Christ and how he lived his life. The same is true with how we build a church. We look at models of church growth that work pragmatically, but we're not looking at them enough theologically. What I mean by that is we compare our church to another church down the road that might be growing a little bit more quickly or a little bit cooler or something like that, but we're not comparing it to the first century church in Acts chapter 2. We need to constantly go back to the first century about how God set up things in the first place. Amen? That's how we develop our strategy as a church for reaching our neighbors and the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus. 